Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. The Ryzen 7 7700X may very well be the sweet spot for a new gaming PC build today. In this video, I'm going to cover this in a build guide and talk about why I think this CPU and the parts here are worth considering for your next PC build. This PC is primarily focused on gaming. It will also handle content creation, business work, multitasking, and more. However, that is not the focus here. The goal here is to build a PC that will provide years of gaming performance at 1440p for a reasonable price while having a solid upgrade path in the future. This is the first video in a series on this build. You will find a playlist linked down in the video description below that will be added to over time as we do further content on this PC. The second video in this series is going to be a why vlog, which is going to be a deep dive into every part, what the alternative options are, why we picked what is here, and why you might choose something else. I will also link our playlist on the i5-13600K build guide, which is the alternative to this one. I'll be providing follow-up benchmarks between the i5-13600K and the Ryzen 7 7700X and link those to both playlists, so be sure you're subscribed to watch those when they come out. Without further ado, please grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into it. This video is not a review of the CPU itself. We have done a launch review on it. That will be also linked in the video description below if you haven't seen it. The TLDR version is that if you're looking for solid gaming performance today while having room to upgrade in the future without having to change your motherboard, then Zen 4 should be on your shopping list. Everything talked about in today's build video will be linked in the video description below. Those links will take you to Newegg, our sponsor for today's video. We buy many of our parts from Newegg, including most of what you see here on the table. This ASRock X670E motherboard, for example, costs less at Newegg at the time of filming than anywhere else online. Newegg also has new products today of launch, including this awesome ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4070. Not all stores stock everything or carry new things on launch day. If you're looking for a complete PC part selection with the best part sorting system in the business, Newegg is your new best friend. As I noted at the start of this video, the goal here is to provide solid 1440p gaming performance for a reasonable price. To add to that, it's also important, in my opinion, to build a PC that's actually nice to build and use, which means we will not be using the cheapest possible case and the cheapest possible power supply. Those type of shortcuts often lead to subpar long-term experiences. As the saying goes, those who buy cheap oftentimes buy twice. Our budget for this PC today is $1,800, which does not include a monitor, mouse, or keyboard. Those items are generally better picked out on their own. However, for the purposes of this build, I'm going to assume that you have a 1440p 144Hz monitor, either in standard or ultrawide. Those can now be purchased for $200 to $400, so for this level of PC, there really is no longer any reason to use 1080p or a 60Hz monitor. If you still are, please take this opportunity to upgrade that as well. Some of you may very well be saying, hold on, you can build a Ryzen 7 7700X gaming PC for way less than $1,800. That's crazy. Well, you're not wrong. You absolutely can build a PC with a Ryzen 7 7700X and an RTX 4070 for $500 less than our $1,800 budget, or about $1,300. That's about the minimum short of bringing over your own parts from a previous build. However, it then becomes something else entirely. You see a lot of cheap pre-built computers doing this. They put in a good CPU, a good graphics card, and the rest of the system is junk. People think they're getting a really nice PC, but they aren't. What do you lose by saving $500, you ask? Great question, everything. The boot drive becomes a cheap Gen 3 one terabyte DRAMless drive. The case and the power supply drop to the bottom of the barrel. The cooler becomes small and loud, and the motherboard goes from sweet to ultra budget. In other words, you lose much of the upgradability and ease of use this PC is meant for. I will cover that in more detail in part two of this video series. If you really can't afford $1,800 to build a new PC, I understand. Building a PC around the Ryzen 7 5700X or the i5-13400F might make more sense for you, but that's a topic for another video. 
Starting off with the core of our computer build today, we have the Ryzen 7 7700X, the mainstream eight core 16 thread CPU from AMD that features eight really fast P cores and none of those funny looking E cores that you'd find over on Team Blue. You really don't need more than eight cores for gaming today. However, expect that to change over time. Thankfully, this installs in the new AMD AM5 socket, which was just released last year in 2022, so you can easily drop in a Zen 5 or perhaps a Zen 6 CPU here in a few years and upgrade when the time is right. These eight cores are also very fast. Competitive in general with the 13th gen from Intel, you'll get top tier frame rates and great 1% lows in today's games. For up to 144 hertz monitors, you really don't need anything else just to play games in 2023. Please do keep in mind that I am focused just on gaming here. If you also want to be able to multitask, live stream while gaming, do content creation, run multiple monitors, then you do need more. However, for a focused gaming PC on a single monitor, this really is the best AM5 CPU deal on the market today. You might very well be asking yourself, why not a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 9? The short answer is, for just gaming, neither of those are the best deal at the moment. The long answer is, I'll explain it in extensive detail in part two of this series. The CPU cooler we'll be installing is the Scythe Mugen 5 Rev C, which includes both AM5 and LGA 1700 mounts right out of the box. I have several of these, they are such a good value for the money and it is really all this CPU needs. It runs cool and quiet and installs in minutes with just a couple of screws. I would however note that this is not enough cooling for the top end CPUs. If you are absolutely sure that you will move to the Zen 5 or Zen 6 based Ryzen 9, you might want to overbuy your cooling solution today to avoid having to buy twice. That being said, this, fits very well on modern motherboards. It does not block the RAM. While it only has one fan, it does have six direct contact heat pipes, so it is substantially more effective than either stock coolers or those $20 and $30 coolers that you see all over the place. For a little bit more money, you get a premium experience. Your motherboard choice is always very personal. There are so many to pick from. Today, we have the ASRock X670E Steel Legend for $285. This is a full featured board with all that you need for a quality build for years to come. I have no reservations about installing a future Zen 5 or Zen 6 CPU on this board, including 16 core 3D chips in the future. This board features a 19 phase power design, four M.2 slots, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E, 20 gigabit USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 Type C, that's a mouthful, a ton of other USB ports, Realtek ALC 20 Premium Audio, and four SATA ports. Now, this board is overkill for just a 7700X build. I'm sure somebody's going to say you don't need this much board for that. You're right. However, I don't think of this as a one and done build. If you were going to do that, the i5-13600K honestly makes much more sense. The point is to be able to upgrade it at least once, if not twice in the future, to a much more powerful CPU near the end of the AM5's run. Next, we're gonna need some system RAM, and this is going to be a choice that I imagine more than one of you is going to disagree with. Please do so in the comment section below. It boosts engagement. 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB DDR5 6000 CL30 for $130. Boy, that's a mouthful. Yes, you can absolutely buy cheaper DDR5 to be sure. For $80, a 32 gigabyte DDR5 5600 CL36 kit exists that will probably work just fine. Maybe, hopefully. But this Trident Z5 kit is AMD Expo certified, so it is assured to work. I have two of this exact kit in my own AMD gaming PC at home, a pair of them actually, for four total DIMMs and 64 gigabytes of RAM. And yes, they ran the first time without complaint at launch at 6,000, even with four DIMMs, something that many cheap RAM kits won't do. Again, you could be cheap and buy twice or pay a little bit more and never have to worry about it. 
So if you want 64 gigabytes, yes, you can just buy two of them. However, for just gaming in 2023, 32 gigabytes of RAM is really fine and you can always replace it all. I'm sure it'll get cheaper in the future if needed when Zen 5 or Zen 6 come out. Our system drive is a super premium two terabyte Samsung 980 Pro Gen 4 NVMe M.2 drive that will provide exceptional performance for Windows and your core games. For all but the most budget of systems, I now consider two terabytes to be the minimum size for a boot drive given current prices. Now, I did not include a game drive in an attempt to keep the price down. However, I personally wouldn't actually build the system without dropping a second drive in for some extra games. However, with two terabytes to start with, not everybody will need a second drive on day one. We need a case to put all this stuff in. Cases can be a highly personal choice. There are hundreds, if not thousands of options to pick from. So anything I put here is but one of many choices. Now I've selected the Cooler Master H500 ARGB mid-tower case for just $99 for this build. It is here because it provides excellent airflow with dual 200 millimeter fans up front, a very large exhaust on the top, and a fan in the rear. It also provides a lovely carrying handle up top, along with all the expected front panel ports and buttons. It is wide enough to accommodate taller tower coolers tall GPUs, and still provide some clearance from the glass side panel. I have built in this case several times before and I have nothing but nice things to say about its cable management, airflow, and ease of use. Finally, that leaves the power supply, an often forgotten about piece of kit that your PC, frankly, just won't turn on without. The options here are almost as broad as the case choice. However, I'm a belt and suspenders kind of guy, despite the lack of suspenders. So we're just gonna step it up with a lovely EVGA 1000 watt power supply. This provides all the power we need today and future proofs us for tomorrow. Fully modular in design, it's short enough to make cable management easy, powerful enough to run any GPU you might upgrade to in the future, including an RTX 5090. It is also efficient enough even for rising electricity rates. I really love these because they are silent as well. It has a fluid dynamic bearing fan and a 10 year warranty is included. Now, you absolutely do not need a one kilowatt power supply for this build. The goal is to spend a little bit more now so you don't have to replace it later. This power supply should easily last you through two and maybe three CPU upgrades and three and possibly four GPU upgrades. What a lovely PC build. There's just one more thing. Perhaps some of you noticed, perhaps some of you were too busy playing the Tweetbook game on your phone while I speak. That's okay, watching the video twice is great for engagement. We need a dedicated graphics card to round out our gaming PC. For a next-gen build, a next-gen mid-level GPU makes the most sense. In this case, we're going with the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4070 from NVIDIA due to its universal support and solid performance. The RTX 4070 provides solid 1440p gaming performance today, and it should continue to do so for the next two years, at which point the 50 series will be calling if you want to keep playing your new AAA games. I will definitely cover a much wider range of GPUs in part two of this series. That really could be a video all by itself. In fact, I recently did it. See the link to the top five GPUs to buy in 2023 down in the video description below. Keep in mind that as new cards launch and prices change, this advice will change over time. I will add that you should avoid the 4060 Ti like the plague. It is not worth its $400 asking price. However, the 4070 Ti is worth considering for $200 more than this 4070. It mostly just gives you a higher frame rate, but the price to performance is pretty reasonable for the extra cost. It's about 25% more money for about 20% more performance overall. This is a lovely build featuring quality parts that will be both a pleasure to build and a pleasure to own for many years to come. You can grow and expand this PC in many ways thanks to the room in the case, the quality of the power supply, the quality of the motherboard, and the performance of the CPU and the GPU. I do look forward to reading your thoughts on this one. As I noted at the start of this video, part two will be next, and it's gonna be the detailed why vlog. And that is meant to be a deep dive into every part, the pros and cons of going higher and lower, and more details behind my choices. 
This is meant to be the short version for those who just want the nuts and bolts. Thank you all so much for watching to the very end of this video. Two gold stars for all of you still here. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. As I said before, there will be links in the video description below. Please check out our link to Newegg, the sponsor for this video, and all of the parts linked to their site down there. They definitely help make this video happen. I picked out all the other parts in this build. They sent me the ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 4070 that you see here. That was the only thing I needed to put something around it, but everything else was my choice. Now, I do like this card. There certainly are alternatives, and I will talk about those alternatives in the next video. However, everything I said in this video is true. Next generation technologies, very low power consumption compared to the competition, and really it has great 1440p performance today. The only main limiting factor is the 12 gigs of VRAM, which is gonna keep it from being a four-year card. It really makes it a two-year card. Now at 1080p, it absolutely is a four-year card, and it may very well be a four-year ultra detail card. It really is quite fast. But again, we'll talk about that next time. As for everything else, I know it's more premium than a lot of people build on their PCs. There is absolutely an alternative of this PC that is cheaper. However, Motherboards, $150 B650 motherboards are so unbelievably limited. I don't like them. I just don't. I think 220 is about the minimum price point, and by that point, you might as well spend the $50 and buy something like this. Again, we'll talk about that more next time. Thank you again so much for watching. Links to my other playlists down below. I mentioned those before. I will see all of you next time. I have no reservations about installing a future Ryzen 9 59 70,000X. <sighs> yeah, I do think a lot of people are going to say, what? Tech suggesting eight cores? Isn't he always all about the 12 and the 16 cores? Yeah, for computers that multitask, do multiple things, have multiple monitors, that you want to have a long life in front of them. I do think that eight cores is over for those. But... Not everybody does that. Some people just have one monitor, they wanna play a game, they don't have 42 things running in their task tray. And honestly, if you're just playing a game, be it Cyberpunk or, well, any of the new games really, eight cores is fine for the next little while, until it isn't, but AM5's upgradable, so that's pretty cool.